Hey everybody, welcome to another video from katytech.co. I'm Crazy Dave. In today's video, we're going to cover the FP5 update from uh, Verizon and Samsung for the Droid Charge. Uh, stay tuned. All right, hey again, everybody. Crazy Dave here. Uh, basically, what's been going on is uh, the Droid Charge has been pushed a new update called FB5. Uh, basically, it's just a patch. Nobody yet has seen any kind of operating system change. Uh, sadly, that doesn't appear to be in our near future at all, uh, short of running custom ROMs. So, what is the FP5 update? Uh, basically, it covers everything from enhanced customer support, updated UI interface, its claims, uh, devices enabled wireless alerting system, USB tethering while in Wi-Fi mode is blocked. There's a handful of things. I'll post links under the show notes so you can get to it and read all about it. Uh, but mostly this uh, video is going to address the issues that people are running into and the questions I'm getting. Uh, what happens if I want to go to the FPF5 update and root coming from stock. What happens if I am already rooted on FP4 and I'm stock? Uh, what about if I'm already ROMed and I want to take the FP5 update? Um, we can address each of those individually. All right, first, uh, what happens if you're not rooted? Well, the good news is not much changes. Go ahead and take the FP5 update like normal over the air. Uh, it will get you all the way set up as Verizon designed. And then from there, you can follow my other video for FP1 and go ahead and root and nothing will change. You'll get your root access. You'll still be on FP5. Everything's good to go and it works. I waited to answer questions until I did this myself. I prefer not to give any directions on anything that I haven't done myself and it works just fine. I've been using it now for several days. Uh, what happens if you're rooted on FP1 or earlier? Well, if you take the FP5 update while rooted, it's likely you will get a boot loop and jump into the Samsung logo and get stuck. Your phone's not broke, it's not bricked. All you need to do is follow my restore video. Go ahead and go through those steps. That'll reset you all the way to an earlier setting called EP4 take the over-the-air update to FP1 or find FP1 and manually push it to the phone via your computer. Either one's acceptable. Once you're on FP1, you can keep going forward to FP5 and update and then go ahead and root or you can prepare yourself to be ROMed. Uh, going into the ROMs, what happens if I'm already ROMed and I'm getting this endless notification over and over and over again? Well, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to turn off that notification. Be forewarned, this goes into line-by-line -line code. You could easily break your phone if you mess up. You need to follow it step-by-step. -step. Uh, no warranty, no guarantee on my part that I'm going to get you down the right path. But I'm going to do everything I can, and I'm going to show you directions on where to follow line-by-line -line and what to do, as well as a video step-by-step -step guide. But let's say you want to run one of the ROMs. Well, there's multiple ones out there. I'll address them in the show notes as well. Um, and I'm also going to put a blog post out uh, covering this all in detail. Basically, we got to wait for the devs to update to FP5. Then you'll stop getting that notification and you can run their ROMs. Sometimes you need to restore before running a ROM. Sometimes you can just update the ROM from the individual dev, uh, such as if you're running Tweak stock and you go to Tweaked, you can just go ahead and update. It just depends on the versions that you're running. Uh, if you want to run an older version, there's two different ways to look at this. If you want to run an older ROM. One is, is that does the update affect the ROM or not? You need to look that up for the individual ROM to make sure if you're too far updated, if it'll hurt the, your uh, ability to run the ROM. Or if you need to be in an earlier state in order to ROM such as if you want to run something that's way outdated but was still pretty cool was Gummy Charge. Um, they did a lot of work on that back in the day. Uh, they've abandoned uh, that design or the dev has abandoned this phone technically and moved on to the Galaxy Nexus and more than likely the uh, Galaxy S3. Uh, but anyways, you need to be on an earlier state or force your phone into an earlier state in order to run it or else you risk 
all kinds of glitches, boot loops, stuff like that, getting your phone stuck. Um, so again, I'll address each of those ROMs individually. Uh, let's say you get to FP1 and you stop. You take the over-the-air update to FP1. It's going to try to push you to FP5 next. Don't take it. Then go ahead and ROM, whether you're going to the Eclipse ROM or you're running Tweaked. Uh, either one of those ROMs are great. I highly recommend both. Uh, from there, you're going to want to turn off those notifications, so again, stand by for that. Uh, basically, I covered just about all of it. Uh, the only piece left was that uh, sometimes the uh, devs will build in to the ROM an inability to see the updates so you don't get pestered with that constant notification. Gummy Charge had that. Uh, Eclipse I think might not have and Tweaked definitely did not. You got the notifications. And that's okay. You can see it and that means it's an alert to you. In case you're not paying attention to the internet on a regular basis, now you know there's an update available to your phone, uh, but you have to take some steps in order to either stop it or accept it. Uh, that's it. Okay, go ahead and we'll uh, stand by for how to turn off notifications. Also, again, just to reiterate, uh, you can follow my restore video to get you back to a stock state, take the updates and go to root it, or you can follow the restore video and go on to other ROMs, or you can turn off notifications. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Stand by.